Hello everyone. Welcome to the third video for solution of a Dexel IEL Physics Unit 1 Gen 2017. This is the third video uh, in which uh, we are going to see the solution of question number 16, 17 and 18. So let's start now. Question number 16. A man pulls a box towards him at a constant speed by pulling on a handle as shown. Uh, the free body diagram for the box and the man are shown. So this is the free body diagram for the box. And this is free body diagram for the man. Identify the pair of forces that have the same magnitude due to Newton's third law. Okay. So if you see the diagram, this is the box. So this diagram, uh, the diagram for the box is showing force acting on the box. So you can see in this di diagram, this is the box and forces acting on the box is the weight, which is W and the normal contact force acting is R and then friction force and then pull of the man and the second one is the free body diagram for the man that means uh, weight of the man acting down and then contact force on the man and then fric friction force this is the friction force in that direction and pull of the box on the man so this is the another one which is you can say the pull of the box in that direction identify the pair of forces that have the same magnitude due to Newton's third law the most important concept of third law pair is you must understand the four four properties the four properties of uh, Newton third law pair so the first property is they must have a same magnitude the second property is uh, they must be of same types of forces same type okay and the third one is they must act in opposite direction opposite direction and the fourth one is they must act on different objects different objects so these are four property that you can categorize or you can see whether the forces are Newton third law pair or not so they must have a same magnitude the same must be of same type they must act opposite direction so if you apply uh, in both the diagram so if you see the normal contact force of the ground on the box and this is normal contact force of the ground on the man so they cannot be the Newton third law pair most of the time students get confused thinking this friction and this friction as Newton third law pair which is absolutely wrong why is that because this is the force acting on the box by the floor and this is the force acting on the man so they are same type of forces they are acting in opposite direction they act on different objects so these three points for these two forces are valid but uh, the first one 
the same magnitude so friction acting on both would be different because friction depends on weight so they cannot have a same value but if you if you think if you see the pull of the man on the box or pull of the box on the man they have a they must have a same magnitude force applied by the man on the box or box on the man they must have a same magnitude they both both are contact forces both are acting in opposite direction you can clearly see they are acting in opposite direction and they act on a different object that means in this two diagram these two are newton third law pair the pull of the man on the box and pull of the box on the man so you can write their name so you can see that these two are newton third law pair state one difference and one similarity other than their magnitude so these are uh, if if you recall all those four point uh, point that i that i mentioned you need to write uh, one one point one similarity and one difference other than magnitude so you can write like that difference is uh, they must act on a different object uh, and similarity they must be of the same types of forces okay the the angle between the pull of the pull of the man on the box and uh, and the horizontal is 35 uh, the mass of the box is 85 show that pull of the man on the box is about 400 the normal contact force on the ground of the ground on the box is 620 newton so this is the diagram and if you draw free body diagram according to this picture so you can say that uh, let's see okay so this is the ground suppose this is a box i'm just taking box as a particle and the man is applying pull so I would say that uh, so this is pull of the man which is making 35 degree with the horizontal which is given here and what do we do whenever remember whenever some vector makes some angle with the horizontal so we must resolve the vector into its component so you can say that i have one component which is called a vertical component or opposite component and the other one is uh, the horizontal component so so the green one is the horizontal component and the the vertical one is the opposite component and you can write their values so this one would be p sine 35 and the horizontal one would be p cos 35 so other than these forces we have uh, normal contact force acting so you can draw like the contact force okay so you can mention this is r and then you have uh, the other force let's make it red this is weight and then you can see you have a uh, friction force the friction force always in opposite direction so this is f friction force so what happened when we resolve uh, a force into its component then after resolving 
this force is gone so we don't need to uh, discuss or include this this p because we already uh, have resolved these forces so overall uh, we have uh, reaction weight friction and these two components so now you can see that if you see vertically in vertical direction so vertically you can see that we have a uh, three forces acting we have three forces acting so you can write that this r and this p sin theta uh, p sin 35 are acting vertically upward which is which are uh, balanced by this weight acting vertically downward so you can relate these three forces so p sin 35 plus R must be equal to W, which is the weight of the box. And because we need to find pull, that means we need to find P. So we can make P as a subject of this equation. So P is equal to W minus R divided by sine 35 I'm sorry about that there's a 5 here so it's a sign 35 and moreover you can say that this is the W which is weight and W is mg minus R divided by sine 35 so this is intermediate step if you have a concept you uh, you can directly write instead of W if you write mg so you can save your time here so now you can just plug in the value so p is equal to m m is uh, is the mass of the box 35 uh, sorry 85 it is 85 times g 9.81 minus r r is the normal contact force and the contact force is uh, 620 minus 620 divided by sine 35 and if you solve this your value of p would be equal to 373 newton and if you round it off so p is approximately is 400 newton okay Second part, the box moves at a constant speed towards the man, calculate the frictional force between the box and the ground. So again, if I redraw the previous diagram, this is the object. And now I'm not drawing a pull, instead I, I should draw the component. So vertical direction, we had, uh, a contact force which is R and along with R we had P sine 35 and then downward we had weight acting and then horizontally in that direction we had F which was friction and then we had P cross 35. So now the, the box is moving with a constant speed towards the man. So it's all about horizontal motion. If you see the diagram, horizontally we have only two forces acting. And the box is moving with constant speed. That means uh, this constant is suggesting that acceleration is zero. That means net force is zero. So meaning, the net force is zero means all forces are balancing. So if you see the direction which are opposite, so you can say that uh, frictional force is equal to P cos 35 and we already have found the value of P. So F is equal to three 
373 that we found in previous previous uh, part cos 35 if you solve this you have a friction is equal to uh, 305.5 uh, newton or you can say f is equal to 306 newton this is your final answer B part three, the man increases his pull on the box. The man and the box starts to move uh, together in the same direction with an acceleration of 0.2. Calculate the frictional force between ground and the man. Okay, so because you are given acceleration and you need to find Okay, calculate the force between ground and the man. So suppose this is the ground. So get this resultant. Let's just take F is equal to M A and F is the resultant force. Remember, F is the resultant force. So F equal m m is the total mass during the motion so total mass is uh, 85 plus 90 this is total mass because man is pulling the box so the overall you consider man and the box as one particle so ma the total mass would be 85 plus 90 and both are moving with the same acceleration so you can Say that ma which is 0 0.200 if you find this is f which is equal to uh yes 35 newton so this is a resultant force in fact what do we need to do this is the man and this is the box one friction is acting on the box okay this is f i'll say fb friction on the box and this is friction acting on the i will use some other color to be good so i will use uh, this is friction on the man fm so in this in this whole system Two forces are acting, friction on the man, friction on the box, horizontally. The, the box is moving uh, rightward, so the net force must be rightward. This is my net force, so I can say that Fm, friction on the man, must be greater than friction on the box. And this resultant, F, is the resultant of these two. So you can say that the, my resultant F is basically resultant of Fm and Fb. So Fm minus Fb. And Fm friction on the man would be equal to F plus Fb. So remember this Fb, we we have already found in the previous part uh, which is 306 and this F is the resultant so which is 35 so if you add these two so finally you can say that friction on the man FM uh, is equal to 341 Question number 17. Our students carried out an experiment to determine the young modulus of a material in the form of a wire. The wire was suspended from a rigid support and weights uh, were added to the free end. Okay. 
the corresponding extension delta L were determined. Uh, the diagram shows how an optical lever was used to measure the extension of the wire. The, the light from the laser were reflected. So this is the reflecting. So this is the reflecting light here. Okay. By the mirror and move upward the distance delta y along a vertical scale as the vertical wire extends. The distance d from the mirror to the scale and the length d of the pivot arm are measured. So this is capital D and this is a small d. Okay. Uh, the following formula was used to determine a precise value for the extension of the wire delta L. So delta L is equal to D delta Y over 2D. So if you know the small d, which is the pivot arm, D, capital D, distance from the laser to the mirror, and the delta Y, which is the extension, corresponding extension of the wire. So you can find this delta L. This is this given formula. Okay, so what are they asking? Before the weight were added to the wire, a student measured the diameter of uh, and the original length of the wire. Describe the measurement that would be taken and how they would be used to accurately to determine the diameter of the wire. It is a typical question whenever they talk about a wire and the measurement of the diameter. So there are typical sentences that we generally write that the, because of the wire we, we use micrometer screw gauge, okay, because it has a precision of, uh, of, of, of a 0 0.001 centimeter, which is appropriate for this kind of measurement. And uh, uh, we take multiple reading from different places if this is a wire we, we take one reading from this place and the other one from this place and the and, the, and so on we take multiple reading in order to remove the random error and then we take the mean that's how we we write the measurement of diameter of a wire so you can say that the student is going to use the micrometers a screw gauge to measure the diameter he will take multiple reading at a different orientation different uh, places and then calculate the mean and the mean will be used okay so next explain why the optical lever was required to measure the extension of the wire uh, it's because if you see the diagram the diagram uh, consists of very small extension here which is delta L and which is uh, and this length is, is, is difficult to measure directly but due to optical lever this small extension is uh, uh, you can say correspond to this delta Y so what is going on here Due to optical lever, this small extension is being magnified. So due to this magnified value, we can easily read. That's the advantage of the optical lever. So that's how you, okay, so diagram is there. So that's how you can write. So the extension is very small. That is difficult to measure directly. Measure directly from the ruler. The optical lever is magnifying the measurement. Why? Because delta Y corresponds to delta L. Okay, so this delta Y correspond to this delta L. Okay, so the student plotted the following graph of weight against the distance moved by the reflected light delta Y. This is the graph delta Y. This is the weight. Okay, so this is the straight line. I guess till here and then the permanent deformation it is being curved so permanent deformation uh, it will not return to the original shape if the graph is suggesting so 
given that delta L is equal to this, use graph to determine the extension delta L of the wire and then hence obtain the value of the Young model of the, of the material of the wire. So, capital D is given, small distance is given, cross section area is given, and original length of the wire is given. In fact, we need to find the Young modulus. And if you see the, the Young modulus, the Young modulus is a stress over a strain, and a stress is force over area. And a strain is change in length per unit length. So if you see, if you can find force and area, this area is given, which is this. Okay, this is the area, original length, <coughs> excuse me, original length L is also given. This is the original length. We need to figure out force uh, We need to figure out force, okay, and delta L. For delta L, they give us a relation in the form of formula, and this relation delta L is. Uh, D delta Y divided by 2D and the value of small d and the capital D are also given here. So for delta L we need delta Y and for delta Y we are going to use graph because this is graph. So what are, we are going to do using this linear region we are going to take any suitable value of delta y in this in this interval. It's up to us. So it's better to take. I can use this this value, which is I guess is 0 0.5 and yes, it's a 0 0.25. But for the safe side, I will be using I guess this 0 0.2. So my value of uh, of delta y from the graph which is this this is 0.2 i'm taking it 0.2 so my delta y is equal to 0.2 meter and the corresponding value of force here if you see if you can if you can figure out corresponding value of uh, force which is equal to 26 Newton. Now you can see that we have a delta Y, we have F, so we can put delta Y here and we can find del delta L and then force in a stress formula and we can figure out a stress and using this delta L, we can figure out a stress, uh, a strain and then dividing a stress with the strain we can find young modulus. So, meaning first we are going to figure out value of delta L. So, delta L is equal to D, small d, and a small d is 0 0.055 times delta Y, which is 0 0.2 divided by 2 times of capital D and capital D is 7.0 meter. When you solve this, you have the value of delta L, which is uh, equal to 7.86 into 10 raised to the power minus 4 meter. This is your delta L. And after delta L, you can figure out uh, a strain. A strain is delta L divided by L, so 7.86 divided by original length, 0.65. When you divide these two numbers, you have uh, 1.21 into 10 raised to the power minus 3. And you don't, and there's no unit for 
epsilon. Next, you figure out a stress, a stress, which is sigma, is force over area, and force is 26 divided by area. Area is 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 divided by 2 into 10 to the power minus 7, and then a stress is equal to uh, 1.3 into 10 raised to the power 8 pascal so you have uh, you have a stress and then you have a strain you can divide these two to find young modulus so finally when you divide these two you will get your young modulus 1.1 into 10 raised to the power 11 Pascal. That's how you figure out. Okay. The student measured the distance moved by the reflected light delta y for the unloading of the wire is sketched onto the axis above. The possible graph for unloading. So for unloading, for unloading, uh, most of the time, again, students uh, get confused because uh, they know that, or you might, you definitely you know that, if you have a graph of elastic band, so this is called loading. And if you unload, then you plot these graph. So it's a bit similar to these graph. So this is loading, and this is unloading. And most of the students use the same concept, and they think after this, they just try to join this, which is absolutely wrong concept. Why is that? Because you see the behavior of the wire. After this, this is the elastic limit, and it is permanently deformed. If it, this is permanently deformed, how, how it can return to the original shape? Because this returning curve to the origin is showing that the material is returning to the original shape. And this is not the case for this wire. So what do we do? From this, if you start unloading, then you just this is the unloading okay okay question number 18 in a competition sk jumper sk down and in one and then take off the from uh, take off from a platform uh, they aim to land as far as possible along a downhill slope. The scoring is based on the distance traveled by the ski jumper beyond the key point. Uh, this is the key point, okay, which is point position as 120 meter along the downhill. That means that this, this distance must be 120 meter. Uh, down the slope before competition begin the ski jumpers have a practice run if any ski jumpers lands too far beyond the key point the initial starting point on the in run for the competition will be at a lower position explain in terms of initial energy of the ski jumper why starting at a lower position will result in a safer landing so these this is in run that means if uh, the jumper is landing far beyond the K point, instead of this position, they need to uh, take jump from some lower point. Some lower point, so it's all about gravitational potential energy. So at lower point, it has a low potential energy, less potential energy. That means after takeoff, it will uh, uh, jumper will be taking off with the less kinetic energy less kinetic energy that means less speed okay and 
at the time of landing so it will have a less impact force less less impact force on the jumper so he or she can have a, um, a safe jump because of the less impact force so you can combine all these points in a way or you can write like this so you can see height is less so lower gp takeoff have a as a the jumper would have a less k less velocity less distance traveled and landing less impact force make the jump safer okay so a ski jumper leaves the takeoff platform uh, horizontally with the velocity of 28 meters per second and lands four seconds later uh, calculate the angle to the horizontal at which she is moving just before she lands so if you see the this is your in run suppose and then so the jumper leaves horizontally with the speed of 28 meter per second and then it's landing somewhere here when she lands she has some velocity in that direction that's what we need uh, no this is velocity and what do we need to do we need to find the angle to the horizontal oh this is not three uh, it is question mark that we need to find so the idea behind finding this theta is uh, is is uh, we must find the velocity so what is ha happening here it's a projectile motion and i guess you know that in horizontal direction we assume that there is no air resistance acting so the horizontal velocity throughout the motion stays same so every point have at every point of the jump the horizontal velocity always remains 28 at the point of landing horizontal velocity would be 28 but as the ski jumper is coming down at the start it has a zero vertical velocity at that moment but as, as it is coming down the vertical component starts increasing so increasing and increasing so this is your horizontal velocity vh and this is your vertical velocity vy if you can figure out the value of vy then we can figure out the value of theta because v is the resultant of these two and vy is a vertical component or vertical velocity after time t so we can use the equation uh, vy is equal to u plus at remember it's all about vertical this is initial velocity or you can say initial vertical velocity which is zero so vy is equal to zero plus 9.81 into t t is the time which is 4.0 or 4 why did i take plus 9.1 because i assume or, or, or uh, you can say that the jumper is coming down so 9.81 so vy is equal to 39.24 meter second inverse this is the velocity at the point of landing vertical velocity and if you see this is a situation so theta angle to the horizontal would be equal to tangent inverse of vy over vh if you use this formula you can say that theta 
is equal to tangent inverse vy which is equal to 39.24 divided by horizontal which is 28 so theta would be equal to 54.48 degree you can figure out 54.5 so this is the angle to the horizontal Okay, so the ski jumper receives 60 point if she lands at K point. Okay. And then 1.8 points for every additional meter along the slope beyond K point. The downhill slope has a constant gradient at 35 degree to the horizontal. This is the angle. Determine the total point is scored for the jump. So if you need to find the total points, so you need to find that distance, this distance. If you can figure out somehow how much this distance is, and I'm just calling this distance D. And if you see this distance is basically uh, 120 plus x and this x this x i am considering distance from k point to the landing point this is x so if you know the distance d or if you know uh, distance x so you can add x plus 120 and then you can figure out the total point in order to do so, you need to think this whole situation as, a, okay, so this is the vertical height traveled, and then this one. So I'm calling this vertical height H, and you see this is a triangle, it's a, it's a, it is a right triangle. So if I can figure out value of H, then using Pythagoras theorem, I can figure out this distance D. Okay, and then for height, okay. So it's again, it's a, it is a, a projectile and whenever we deal with the vertical one, so uh, for us, uh, the easiest equation for, for vertical height is S is equal UT plus half at square and again initial velocity u is zero so this s which is a vertical height so h is equal to of course half gt square g is plus 9.8 and time is 4.0 second which is given in a previous position or previous part so you can put this t as 4 and g is 9.81 and when you solve this you have height h is equal to 78.5 meter this is vertical height so after finding height you have two different choices to figure out the value of x or d the one is the long way and the other one is is a short way so for the long way what you can do is first you figure out this horizontal distance and this horizontal distance which is in fact uh, s dash you can call it s dash and s dash you can say that this is ut and u is uh, horizontal velocity which is 28 and t again is 4 if you multiply 28 and 4 you can figure out s dash so you have a opposite you have adjacent and using pythagoras theorem you can figure out d and uh, from d you can subtract 120 and you can figure out directly x so this is one way you figure out horizontal distance and then pythagoras theorem you figure out D and then X but what I, 
am I doing here is 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 instead of horizontal distance I use a simple trigonometric ratios because if you see this is a right triangle this and this is 35 degree this is opposite and we need to find hypotenuse so I can say that uh, sine theta or sine 35 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse and opposite is h and hypotenuse is d h we are already have found this is my h and d i need to find so if you put h here you can make d as a subject so d would be equal to 136 point 86 meter once you have d you can figure out x so x is equal to uh, 120 d minus 120 and x this extra distance beyond k point and then x would be equal to 16.86 so the total point total point would be 60 which is the point for k till k point you have a 60 point plus the point for extra distance and extra distance is 16.86 and remember for every meter the jumper will get 1.8 so you will do 16.86 times 1.8 the total point would be equal to 90.35 the calculation in b assume that the only force acting on the sky sky jump ski jumper was the gravitational force state one other force that acts on a ski jumper and discuss how this force might affect the distance traveled by the ski jumper so remember whatever kind of motion we have if we have a projectile ground to ground or if we have a projectile coming from some height we always ignore air resistance air resistance that's how we uh, can use s equal ut s equal ut because we are ignoring air resistance that's the force that they are talking about the additional force if we include air resistance or air drag it will affect the speed so speed will be less and the range would be less so you can write that the additional force is the air drag that falls uh, the horizontal acceleration due to which your velocity is going to decrease and of course the range of the jumper will also effect thank you very much that's it for this uh, last video i hope uh, you you enjoy it and uh, you are taking benefit from this these video and thanks for your all your comments and appreciation uh, see you soon in the next video Thank you.